Many recreational players struggle with the high forehand and that is for good reason. It is a complex shot and its proper execution will have to depend on various factors. Let's start off with what you should not do when hitting a high forehand and you should never take the ball off the bounce in this area. Taking the ball off the bounce is a good strategy in some circumstances. So when the ball is taken off the bounce, it's usually hit below the knee level in this area. And if the ball has a lot of penetration, a lot of speed, then it's okay to just take it off the bounce because you can work with the pace of the incoming ball. And when we take balls off the bounce, we need the pace of the incoming ball and we're just basically going to block the ball back. We're gonna bunt it. We're not gonna be able to take a full swing. You can think of it almost as a half volley. It's pretty much the same mechanics behind the shot. We don't have a lot of pace on a high ball most of the time. So when we try to take it off the bounce, we're gonna to have to have a shorter swing and we're not gonna be able to get a lot of power on a shot like that. Ideally, if you were going to take the ball off the bounce, the ball needs to have a low trajectory and it has to have pace. And so a high ball will, after the bounce, uh, go very high. So if you try to take it right off the bounce, uh, you are very frequently going to miss hit the ball. Another thing that you shouldn't do is let the ball come up and then let it come down too low because that ball is going to push you uh, too far back and it's going to lose so much pace that you're going to have a very difficult time uh, generating power if you allow the high ball to come down too low. And often if the ball has a little bit of penetration, it's also going to push you uh, backwards. So as you're waiting for the ball to drop, you're going to be moving backwards and then it's going to be very difficult to find your balance. To understand how to handle the high forehand, we have to take a look at the flight path of a high ball. So the ball is going to bounce and it's gonna go high, usually above our head, and then eventually it's gonna come back down. So where we can strike the ball is on its way up from the bounce, and when it goes to about the chest height, this is one way to hit it, or we can wait for the ball to come up, and then before it gets down below the chest area, we can also hit it on the way down. So those are your two options when it comes to the high ball. At the high level, the high balls usually come with a lot of penetration. And in those cases, these balls have to be taken on the rise. So when that high ball is going up, uh, you don't want to let it come up above your head and back down because the penetration of the high ball is gonna push you too far back and you will not be able to hit the ball aggressively. So in those circumstances, those balls need to be taken on the rise about the chest area. However, at the recreational level, often these type of high balls do not have a lot of penetration. And taking the ball on the rise requires great timing. And it is much easier to let the ball come up and then down, and then you take it at the chest area when the ball is on the way down. The swing path on the high forehand will depend on various factors. Some professional players will drop the racket into their regular racket drop, and then from here, they will go up towards the high ball and then finish straight across. Other players will adjust their take back uh, towards the height of the ball. So they will take the racket up a little bit higher and then come straight across the ball like this. For the average player, it's a lot easier to adjust the take back uh, to the height of the ball. So let's say, for example, you get a low ball, you can drop the racket down a little bit lower. Uh, you get your normal forehand, you drop it down as you always do. And then when you get a high forehand, you adjust the take back to go a little bit higher uh, before you hit across. It's important to use the body properly on the high forehand because the incoming ball usually does not have a lot of penetration and it's losing speed rapidly. So we have to utilize our body to generate the power. And the way you're going to do this is you're gonna make contact chest height and then you're gonna hit across and you're simply going to shift your weight uh, from your dominant side to the non-dominant side. So in my case, I'm a right-hander, I'm gonna go right to left. And if you really rip the ball hard, you will actually leave the ground with your feet. You're gonna become airborne and you're gonna land on your non-dominant foot. 
In some instances, the high forehand can also be hit with a more downward swing path. So if you are very close to the net, and if you're hitting the ball chest height, you can hit it down, but this will depend on various factors. Your height, it will depend how far exactly you are away from the net. So you're gonna have to figure out if this works. The safer bet is to always finish straight across this way. Another option you have if the ball doesn't have a lot of depth, let's say if it's going to bounce around the service line, you can take it as a swing volley. Uh, the swing volleys are very tricky shots because in a real match, they have to be taken uh, while the player is in transition moving forward. And they, that makes them a little bit more difficult to execute. If you do stationary swing volleys, uh, they're quite easy to handle. And the swing volley is going to be hit the same way as a high forehand. You're going to make contact uh, about chest height and then you're going to swing straight across the body like this. Your footwork and your rhythm are possibly the most important things when executing a high forehand and this is where I see the most mistakes at the recreational level. So what you have to do is move your feet with a lot of intensity as the high ball is approaching. A lot of players will get stationary and then once the ball bounces it's completely out of their reach and it's too late for them to make any adjustments. So this is what you'll have to do. The high ball will come and now you're going to start moving and this might actually be uh, stationary. You might not be moving around too much but you got to keep your feet moving because you never quite know how this high ball is going to react off the bounce. If you're playing on hard court, I want to hear those shoes squeak when you're setting up. That is a good sign that you're moving your feet and if you do that, you're going to be setting up the high ball just fine. And now once you feel like you're set in the right place, you're going to have to load and unload in a very rhythmic way. It's almost like a dance. So you're going to load and then unload like this. You're going to load and unload like this. And this has to happen right before you strike the ball. Make sure you practice the footwork and the rhythm on the high forehand. It is a little bit tricky to get the loading the unloading timed correctly. But once you get the hang of it, you're gonna be hitting your high forehands much better.